Hey boys and girls, welcome back. It is Vordy here and we're going to be taking a look at the new information that was presented to us for the new banner that's coming out. And obviously, to keep it in the loop of how things are done here as normal, I'm just going to be in the middle of a fight, just fighting this guy here. No big deal. I was trying to auto him. But he's a boss. Probably shouldn't have done that, but I did it anyways. So, that happened. Don't do what I did. If you're going to be doing it, Probably should use some abilities, otherwise he's got a he's got a chance of casting stop on all your units, and then you're just gonna sit there and take a raping. All right, come on, come on quickly, quickly. What are you doing? What are you doing? Quickly. <laughs> all right. So, as you guys probably know, when you woke up this morning, you saw some news. News is always good. We normally get it on uh, on Wednesday, which is great. So we got some news. Um, there was a few different things. The one thing that caught me off guard, where was it? Awakened Warriors! No, that's not the one. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Amazing Enhancements. Alright, so I saw this in the morning and I'm like, oh crap! Here's our next batch of cool enhancements for our units. And I skipped everything and I'm like, oh my god, let's take a look at... What? Amazing enhancements for campaign boost great and amazing success success rates. What? So what this is is when you're leveling up your units There's a higher chance now uh, There's a higher probability of having great and amazing success when fusing units uh, And it will greatly increase their experience Which is a huge letdown. That's, it's a good thing, but it was a huge letdown. Damn man. Come on. That was a little bit of a letdown, but anyways, it goes on to kind of giving us the remainder of the stuff. So next thing here, which is the weaker of the stuff, is Chamber of Crystals. If you need it, then go get those crystals to level up your espers. Uh, the next one here that we're going to be looking at is going to be the Ambitious Engineer and the Darkening Cloud. So what this is, um, is kind of how the King Mog events have been running for like the last little while. Essentially, you get a King Mog event early on. And then the second week of the King Mug event, you get a bonus event that is kind of related to uh, to that event. Um, so it's always something interesting. Uh, at at the moment, it's uh, it's kind of like a trial event where you're going to be fighting two bosses. So essentially, it says challenge Doctor Sid and Famfrit, which is pretty cool. Uh, the ambitious engineer and the cloud, uh, the darkening cloud. There's some rewards here you'll get. Uh, a new high, a highly difficult quest, Ambitious Engineering, The Darkening Cloud, will become available starting Friday, starting this Friday and ending uh, on the 21st. Pretty cool. So, Mr. Master Kupo Dupo says a little bit of stuff here for us. He says, be sure to bluster your water-based defenses, Kupo. You should, uh, you, should ready, you should ready abilities like Dispel to remove your enemy's status effects, Kupo. And uh, Dr. Sid's anti-magic can reflect back some magic really so for the first one there water based uh, defense so obviously if you have some sort of green mage marie uh if you have um zargabath or any of those guys that can buff your aoe resistances then you're good to go um but the one that's really interesting is the dispel move so if he's going to be buffing himself with some buffs really i wouldn't bring the spell if you have zon i would probably bring zon instead uh, and steal that buff for your whole team depending on how good the buff really is um so that might be your better bet but we'll see exactly what the event uh, is about i didn't do this one in the japanese version and i really don't know anything about it so i may be going in there pretty blind which is fine when it comes around, I'm more than likely going to be bringing Zon myself to make sure that I can take that buff and keep it for myself. Uh, especially depending on what it is, right? If it's something silly and I don't really need it, then, then I'm just going to bring a unit that has the spell. Or bring Ramu. Uh, Ramu has the spell in his kit. If you pick that up, then you'll be able to use that. Uh, and then the anti-magic, uh, which can reflect some magic back, it's going to be a little bit interesting. I wonder how that can be dispelled. Because the way I'm looking at it, uh, dispel is a... A spell so if it's reflecting will it reflect the sp uh, dispel back at you or will it dispel that which makes it very interesting considering if for those of us who might have which is gonna readjust for those of us who have uh, Bushido freedom technically it's not ma well it isn't magic so nothing technical about it but Bushido freedom will actually remove it completely so if he casts something on himself then we can remove that off of him with uh, Bushido Freedom. If it's something that's naturally in his kit or just naturally on him, then it's gonna be a little bit interesting. Uh, it's gonna be a really, really, really interesting fight. So based off of what we're getting here, it's got me thinking a little bit. I think it's gonna be a fun fight. Two people to fight again. 
For completing the ward initially, you'll get the the four star trust mogul, which is five percent. If you uh, clear it and you use the Wateraga, you will be able to get the ten thousand moat, which I don't think is as a big a priority for a lot of people. Uh, completing it with a party of five or less, you get earth resistance plus fifteen percent. Uh, I don't really know what to say about that. This would have been useful during the Titan raid, but. You know, more resistance is never bad, so pick that up. Now here's the big one. Clear without using green magic, you will get a manufactured, manufactured nethesite. So anyways, what it does is it nullifies one magic cast by an enemy for one turn. This is similar to what Celeb has. She's got Sealing Blade, I believe it's called. Sealing Blade does the same thing. It nullifies one spell. And then you can a have this ability now that you can actually cast on yourself, which will nullify a spell as well. Which is interesting, because then you can kind of do it multiple times. And you don't actually, you actually don't have to bring Celeb only, you can just have it. Which is crazy! Alright. So, this is going to be the good one. If you can get that, then you're going to be pretty happy. The rest of these rewards you can kind of go without. So, enlist the help of these dudes here from Final Fantasy XII Banner to help you achieve it. We know the spew on that. Uh, Zarga Path would be probably really useful here. Um, if you are lacking a tank, then Razzle would be pretty good too. Ash might be pretty good as well. So these three would be pretty good. Uh, Van I would probably avoid, uh, unless you don't have a full break unit and you want to break them, then that's up to you. Next tier is the Promised Beyond Time. So it's a story event, just like the first story event which you got, which was just a little while ago, which was about Folden and Amelia and Camille. This is the next set of story for us to kind of be able to adventure through. I really like these events because they get, uh, you're kind of guaranteed to get these amazing items that you normally don't have access to um, anywhere else. So you'll get some story items, which is like weapons or something, and on top of that, you'll get a lot more chances to kind of guarantee yourself some some pure Chris or mega Chris or giant Chris or whatever, whichever the category you fall under when you get it, you'll get those as well. So. New characters, introducing a new Final Fantasy Brave uh, Exvius story event. Starting on Friday till the 28th of uh, July, you're going to have this event live. So essentially what it is, it's got a little thing, you click on it, you go into it, and then you will be locked into an event. You pick a party, and that party stays with you till you finish the event or till you fail. You cannot change your party, you cannot, do any, you cannot change anything that you didn't bring with you from the start. You s through the whole clear. Right, so it's like 10 or 15 fights. So you gotta make sure you think it through. Don't bring units that are not good. I don't really know if I can say it any other way. Just make sure you don't bring any bad units. I know, like, like most people, like I, how I am, I normally bring, um, like, when I'm clearing story and it's easy stuff, I will bring characters I don't get to bring along because they're weak, but I really like them, right? Like Zidane. <laughs> Zidane's really weak. He's a bag of chips. But I like to bring him along. I gear him out, I deck him out with the best possible gear I can put on him with a bunch of TMs, and then I bring him along to clear the stories because he's one of my favorite characters. I like to do that. So don't do that for these events if you don't want to have to repeat it. And let me explain that. If you get to the last part of the story, you say you clear like 10 fights or whatever, and then you missed uh, like one of the achievements or whatever, or the challenges, you're going to have to clear the whole thing all the way through from the beginning just to get that last one. So look in advance what you need. And then bring units that cover all of those elements and to cover all of those things like which espers you need to bring along and stuff. So it takes a little bit of premeditated planning. Do it like that and you'll be you'll be very good. You'll be happy that you sat down and took a second because if you miss one of those and it's something you really wanted, you're gonna have to redo it again. And it's it's lame because it, it costs you a lot of uh, energy to get to go through the whole thing. Alright, so they kind of explain that to you here. Go to the map, blah blah blah, then you'll be passing through all of these things. You start at the first one, you go all the way through. Ones that have like a scroll or a map looking thing on it, that's where you're going to get a story. Uh, where there is the swords, that's where you're going to be fighting, right? So you get a little bit of story, a little bit of fighting, and stuff like that. As you can see here, there's different kinds of things you're going to be getting through the rewards. You get some trust moogles, some crists, lapis, tickets, and then some materials here. Uh, and you kind of clear through it, and there's different sections of it. So I think last time we had like a dozen I think so it's actually really really nice and they kind of explain everything for you here so in the battles you will consume energy whereas in the story scenarios there's no energy consumed which is cool and then it says here ability awakening materials introduction white alchrist enhances white magic power pure crist mainly enhances attack abilities so uh, and here are the items that are being um, that you can get these are normally in the last like two stages or three stages um, you can get elven gloves 
It is an accessory with MP20%, which is really solid, wind and light resistance 30%, which is again really, really solid, enables Song of Memories when equipped. Song of, Song of Memories gradually restores hit points and MP for all allies while singing. So when the unit is using Song of Memories, they are unable to do anything, they just kind of sit there and heal. While... That's kind of cool. I mean, it gives any unit the ability to be able to kind of heal. The question is, is how strong is it? Probably not very strong. But still, if you need it, you have it. And then you get a katana here with non-elemental on it, even though it looks fiery here. That's showing a uh, dwarf's katana, attack 70, and um, no element on it, which is good. Right? And these are the new units we're going to be getting, and we'll take a look at those in a second. But uh, we, we get a few different units here that are pretty interesting. Uh, even though the weak guy here is not that bad. But let's uh, let's jump into that right now, actually. And then the last announcement here, they're telling us with the, this new event, we're going to be getting a new banner. These are all Final Fantasy Brave Exvius characters. So, um, we've had a lot of Final Fantasy based characters, so these are brand new characters, so it, it's expected that they'll introduce their own uh, characters in here. So you have a bunch of characters that can go to 6 star and one that can go to 5 star. This will go live Friday as per usual, and it'll end on the 20th at the same day the event ends, this will end as well. So, the big kahuna in this banner is going to be called Lunera. Lunera? And, uh, but looking at our stats here, overall her hit points is really, really low, like, it's just overall her stuff is low she is a magic caster that can use bows okay her mp is really strong and her magic is really really strong so she's kind of designed for that everything else is kind of redundant for her so five star going to six her um trust mastery is elf's bow uh, really this is more like um like for her nobody else like right now there's no other units that can utilize this other than i would say I would probably say Noctis can you technically utilize this because he can use bows, I believe. I can't remember now. Maybe he can use bows to kind of give him that hybrid magic boost if you're looking for it, but I don't really know if he can. But either way, this is really designed directly for her. So if you do get her, you want to get the best out of her, you're probably going to want to get this bow. Uh, looking at the abilities here, Auroreal uh, uh, Ray, wind and light damage to all enemies. Not bad. Elf Superior. Uh, boost, wind, and light resistance, and magic, and spirit when equipped with a bow. So that's a self buff to herself, which is really cool. She is uh, required to use bows, we know that, based on her uh, <laughs> thing here. And then she'll get a, bu a buff for doing that, which is good. She also gets a global upgrade. This is similar to what we saw with Fallen. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume it's a plus two ability. So Elven's Song gradually restores hit points, MP for all allies while singing, and will also boost attack, defense, magic, and spirit. So because... Once you start singing, your unit just sits there and does nothing. I'm going to assume this is going to be a pretty substantial buff. It's not going to be like 60%. You're looking at somewhere like 80 or 90%. I don't think it's going to be 100% because um, Ramza is going to be the big kahuna for that. And I don't think they want to overshadow him that much because people have been waiting for his enhancements. If there's another character that can do it and it comes out sooner, then Ramza is going to be super overshadowed and it's going to be a little bit lame. So I, I'm thinking like 80% or 90% buff to all of those, which is which is still really big, but this unit becomes uh, useless while singing. He just sits there and sings, and but you get the buffs, right? So overall, this unit is pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know much about her kit, or his kit, or her kit. I don't know whether it's a boy or a girl. I'm going to assume Luna, Lunera. I'm assuming it's a girl. Well, I mean, I can tell by her chest here. Definitely a girl. I mean, maybe. Maybe a guy's got that. I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to stick with the girl here. So this chick is really, really good. Just by looking at her stuff, not knowing what else in her kit without actually looking at it. Uh, she's pretty interesting. She kind of is sitting on that area kind of where Ramza is. But he's uh, she has usefulness. Whereas Ramza really is just there for buffing and does nothing else with some breaks. Alright, the next one here is Bran. So Bran is a uh, attacker, like a physical attacker. You can see by his in, uh, stats here, everything is pretty weak except his attack. Hit points is okay for an attacker, um, so it's not bad. Five star going to six star, job warrior up here, the job is archer. Uh, Elvin's pride is the trust mastery, boosts MP by 30%, attack by 20%, lightning resistance by 30%. I really like these, you guys should probably know that by now. I'm a big fan when there's multiple stats on there and the stats are uh, relatable. So, MP can go with any stat, um, so every unit uses MP, so it's nice to see. So any character that's going to require attack, they're going to benefit from the 30% uh, MP. So this is a really nice TM. If you do get Bran, uh, my advice is to pick up his uh, Trust Mastery, you're going to be very happy with it. It is, a, it is a very, very nice, plus lightning resistance, 
is always a bonus. Uh, looking at his abilities here, Lightning Shield, Boost Lightning, and Light Resistance for all allies, that's not bad. Bright Storm, Light Damage to all enemies, alright, so it's a, it's a theme here, they're doing Light Damage. Uh, thunderclap, Lightning and Light Damage, and reduces Lightning and Light Resistance for all enemies, so very nice, he kind of buffs his own damage uh, output by debuffing his enemies. Overall, another interesting unit, again, without looking at his full kit, looks okay, I haven't heard anything super crazy, I have a bunch of this guy on my Japanese account, I just fed them into, into each other haven't leveled them up or used them so uh, I, I can't tell you much about it but again once we get the patch notes to see what the changes are for global we'll uh, we'll cover that as well uh, tomorrow so here we got Helena Helena is one of the ones I've kind of heard things on and off about her um, good and bad and some people are saying like yeah you know you, she's useful but we're gonna really see how useful she is she's got some interesting chaining abilities apparently so we're gonna see uh, speaking of chaining I believe that Lunera has a very powerful move this this ray move I think is like a multi attack if I remember, like hits a lot, more than ten times I believe it hits. I can't remember something stupid crazy. She's got an ability that hits is super crazy. That's was the thing I was standing out about her. Um, but same thing with her. I think they said there's like some sort of uh, move in here that kind of attacks multiple times. It's interesting. So overall, uh, marketed as a physical attacker, every other stat is really weak. The trust mastery is mystical skull. Uh, which is an adventure, I think that's pretty funny. He gives you Hyper Mentalist as an ability. Can't remember what it really does, but she, as an ace adventurer, can equip short swords, whips, and throwing weapons or guns and can dual wield them, which is really cool. Uh, Endless Dream puts self to sleep and restores hit points and MP. Uh, Urgent Rebirth revive one ally from being killed, she's got raised. The rest of her kit, again, for the rest of these guys, I never looked at it, so I'm not really sure. Her magic, uh, Mystic Skull, is actually pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to have to take a look at what Hyper Mentalist does once it comes out. But uh, overall, I have nothing to say good or bad about this unit. The stats are a little bit weak, that's about it. And then the last dude here, who is going to be the one that you're going to get the most of, he's a blacksmith. Uh, name is Ruggles. Set up as a support unit. He goes from 3 to 5 star. His TM is really nice. Uh, 108 attack for a hammer or mace. Uh, Earth element, this is really, really good. We haven't had anything similar like this uh, since Aileen's weapon, so this is really nice. And he's a, a three star, you'll be getting a lot of them. He will boost your Earth resistance, so you'll be able to sing as well Song of Memories for all allies. And he's got Special Hammer, which deals partially on mitigate damage to all enemies. So overall, the banner looks pretty interesting. Again, I'm gonna wait till I see exactly what kind of buffs or debuffs they're gonna be doing for the global version. Before I make my decision whether I'm gonna pull, I'll be making a quick video kind of covering those changes and letting you know exactly whether you should be pulling or not on that banner for sure because I think this is one of those ones that you're probably going to be able to skip uh, because no real niches are being filled here except Lunera with that singing but Ramza's enhancements are around the corner I'm hoping so we'll, we'll see about that alright guys thank you so much for sticking around let me know how you guys feel about this banner and this event that's coming out for the Final Fantasy Brave Exvius and uh, let me know how you guys are doing in the previous events and we'll chat and I'll see you guys in the next video this is Vordy and I'm out of here peace oh yeah don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that good stuff because that is also live I'll try to make sure that I remind you guys till we get more followings I will see you guys next time I'm out of here peace